All right, now we are going to continue with um, um, some topics left out in chapter 2. So, previously we have um, come up to the point where uh, we almost completed chapter 2, but then um, there are a few uh, parts which has, which has not uh, covered thoroughly, which is basically uh, on this part. Okay, so today we're going to cover uh, oscillator and um, oscillator and uh, timer, clock cycle and timer. Right, um, what is basically an oscillator is um, a, 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 a circuit, all right? Uh, used to supply uh, to provide a clock source to the microcontroller. Uh, uh, microcomputers and microcontrollers, uh, microprocessors will will need to have a uh, uh, clock source uh, for it to operate because this is how the basic of a computer to work. Um, it will provide clock information for microcontroller to execute programs and ex instructions. Um, for PIC 16F84A um, microcontroller, uh, two most uh, common configuration of uh, oscillator includes these two, all right, uh, which we call crystal oscillator and also resistor capacitor oscillator. Um, both have different configurations and specifications with which we will look into after this. Alright, now the first one, crystal oscillator, is actually um, consists of uh, one crystal. Okay, this is the crystal. Uh, and uh, uh, paired with two capacitors. Okay, if you can see here, there is one capacitor here and another capacitor here. Okay, connected to ground. Okay, so from this capacitor, it goes to the ground. And uh, for 2 MHz or 4 MHz crystal oscillator, uh, the capacitor may range from 15 to 33 picofarad. Uh, this thing, you can actually refer to data sheet of uh, Right, and uh, oscillators and capacitors can be packed in in a joint case with three pins. Uh, this is like a one piece of uh, oscillator, uh, oscillator, which uh, built together with a capacitor. Right, so they have built-in oscillator and then capacitor in there. So that's why it has uh, three pins. So we call this as a ceramic resonator. Center pins of the ceramic resonator are grounded, okay, while the end pins are connected to oscillator 1 and C2 pin of the microcontroller. The reason to place an oscillator near the microcontroller is to <coughs> avoid interference, okay. So it says here, uh, crystal oscillator uh, must be placed very close to the PRC uh, microcontroller. Usually, the crystal oscillator is kept in metal housing. Right, uh, if you were to look an example of crystal, here's uh, how crystal looks like. Um, this is one type of crystal and this is how the crystal is, uh, uh, circuit is arranged. Let me see if we have any other types. Uh, this is what we call the crystal oscillator with uh, built-in um, um, capacitor. This is a surface mount crystal oscillator. I was looking for something that we usually have. Yeah, this one. This is the one that we usually have. Um, 
uh, this one is uh, if you can see one six here dot zero zero is actually sixteen megahertz uh, crystal. Okay, this is crystal only. You have to pair it with this uh, capacitor. Okay, this is just a crystal. You have to pair it with the capacitor. If not, you're gonna have to look for crystal oscillator. Crystal oscillator is actually the one that has three pins, like like this one, for example. Okay, this is crystal oscillator. This one is also a crystal oscillator. Right. Next. Um, next type of uh, oscillator is a RC uh, oscillator, which consists of a resistor and also a capacitor. This is a um, uh, um, uh, cost-saving uh, design, whereby it uh, it is. Uh, uh, use where uh, timing is not really an issue if your your system requires a very um, a precise timing then you have to use a uh, crystal oscillator instead of this RC okay so there are calculations how to do it resonant frequency of RC oscillator depends on supply voltage rate resistance and capacity capacity of the capacitor right um, there are calculations for it I'm not going to go through in detail for this for this but you can refer to data sheet if you will need uh, further explanation and then let's look into uh, clock and instruction cycle clock cycle what is clock cycle is a cycle of time for one oscillation of the clock so when we talk about clock, we, we talk about this uh, 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 signal that uh, oscillates like this, which in the form of square wave. So if you look at this point and this point here, and this one again, which uh, it shows that this thing will come, the wave comes back to its um, um, starting point, okay, before repeating again. So this is what we call one cycle, right? one clock cycle and then what is instruction cycle instruction cycle is a cycle time the amount of time that is required to uh, perform one instruction what is the instruction that you have learned so far in your labs for example move LW 0 times 0 2 okay move LW 0 times 0 2 this is one instruction cycle so how many clock cycle for this one instruction cycle so this is actually four clock cycle for each instruction cycle okay the clock for PIC sitting F84A is obtained from an external source which we call the oscillator which we talked in the previous slides Okay, the microcontroller takes a four clock cycles, which we name here as Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4, to execute one instruction. So remember, just now we mentioned one instruction cycle. If you look at this uh, graphic representation, this one instruction cycle uh, requires four clock cycles. So Q1 is the, the first clock cycle, Q2, Q3, Q4 is the fourth clock cycle. Okay, so from here, number one. Let me erase this part. Okay, number one, number two, number three, and number four. So those are four clock cycle required to um, uh, perform one single instruction like like this one. Okay, each instruction is called called from program memory on every Q1 and is written in the instruction register on Q4. So at this point during the Q1, okay. Um, uh, instruction is uh, being fetched from program memory. Okay, at Q4 here, uh, the instruction is written in the register. So, again, here we need four clock cycle to execute one instruction. All right. So this is the cutout from the data sheet. You can refer to data sheet PIC 16F84. It says here one instruction cycle consists of four oscillator periods. 
what it means by that is for a clock cycle. This is what I have uh, mentioned in the previous slides. Thus, for an oscillator frequency of 4 MHz, the normal instruction execution time is 1 microsecond. This is a conditional test if Okay, the rest is not, not uh, related. Right, so if we have, um, um, let's look at this example, the best thing is. If you have a 20 megahertz crystal, what is the time required for one instruction cycle? Okay, 20 megahertz, uh, what is the time for one instruction cycle? First of all, you need to find what is the uh, time for one cycle. Okay, you need to find the time for one cycle. And then for one instruction cycle is four clock cycle. So number two, you have to find four clock cycle is how much uh, the time requires. So let's uh, the first thing let's look at the time for one cycle, which is actually given a twenty megahertz crystal is this is actually the period one over f. Okay, 1 over frequency which is 1 over 20 megahertz this one equivalent to 50 nanosecond all right then uh, to have a four instruction cycle so you times by four okay so this is number one number two uh, four clock cycle meaning four times 50 nanosecond which is 200 nanosecond okay so 200 nanosecond also equivalent to 0 0.2 microsecond for each instruction all right next uh, let's go through this uh, exercise uh, get the instruction cycle for a microcontroller with a 10 megahertz clock so remember the first thing you need to find is the clock cycle cycle which is equals to t equals to 1 over f which is equal to 1 over 10 megahertz what is that equals to okay number two you have to find for four clock cycle which is one instruction and you need to know how much uh, uh, the time requires for one instruction which is actually four times 1 over 10 megahertz equals to something so what's what's the um, what's the answer for this? You have to find the calculator and do the math. Okay, so we got here about um, four uh, four hundred sorry four hundred nanosecond or zero point four microsecond. Right. Now, do exercise 2. Um, what you have to do is calculate the time taken to perform the following codes. Alright, so what is the total amount of time required for this? Pipelining, um, I, I think I have explained this a little bit in the class. In every microprocessor operation, uh, there are four basic operations uh, continu continuously performed, which we call um, fetch, okay, instruction into the address bus, okay, <coughs> fetch. Uh, this is related to um, the process here related to Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 just now. Okay, this is Q2, Q3, Q4. So total is four uh, clock cycle used to uh, perform uh, an instruction. Okay, first of all, you we do is fetching the instruction, and then decode, and then execute, and then store it. So the process will go on and on and on. Pipelining is a concept of executing an instruction 
where each instruction is effectively executed in one cycle. But in actual, uh, this is just a technique. In actual, um, each instruction requires uh, uh, more than one cycle if we don't use the pipelining. If you if you see here, this is how the instruction is uh, being executed. First, it will fetch, decode, execute, and write. So if you can see, the first clock you will do this fetch, second clock will do this uh, decode, third clock is execute, fourth clock is write. And then uh, fifth clock, you you ready to fetch the next instruction. So here you already take like um, um, four clock cycle for one instruction, and then you take another four uh, clock cycle for another uh, uh, instruction. But what happens is actually the fetch is uh, process will take about four clock cycle to begin. So in the end. It will take a longer um, a process, okay, to to execute another instruction. So what we do here is um, pipelining. This is what we call pipelining. When we do fetch the first instruction, and then uh, during the first uh, cycle, during the next cycle we do decode for the first uh, instruction, but we already fetch for the next uh, instruction. And then third uh, clock cycle, we fetch, uh, we execute the uh, first instruction, and then we decode the second instruction. Remember, this line is for the first instruction, and this line for the second instruction. Towards the end, at the fourth clock, first instruction has already com completed its um, its uh, instruction cycle, and then fifth clock, second instruction has already completed the the uh, instruction cycle. As compared to the uh, non-pipeline, you will have to complete um, second instruction cycle after eighth clock cycle. So this will waste uh, so much time, whereas uh, this could have been done um, uh, um, more than you, you could have saved like three clock cycles if you use, if you use this uh, pipelining. Okay. Timer. Okay. What is timer? Timer is. Um, necessary to have uh, some sort of delay for control program or instruction execution time. Uh, application of uh, the timer uh, usually uh, known as clock frequency, uh, counting external events, let's say how many loop you want to do, uh, 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 counting, and then a pulse with measurement, uh, which is the PWM. What is PWM? Okay, like this, this PWM. This is on time, this is off time. Okay, pulse with modulation. Okay, so we control the path, which means the on time uh, against the uh, one clock cycle. And then we also use to generate pulse output. Timer uh, are really n bit binary counters with additional features. Uh, the timer, timer 0, timer 1, timer 2, um, it depends on the family. Okay, it could either 8 bits or 16 bits. Timer is an n bit register whose value is continually increasing. For example, 8 bit counter count up from 0 to 255 and it repeats over and over again. Okay. So PIC84 will have an 8-bit timer counting 0 to 255. After up to 55, it will uh, recount uh, from, from 0 again. Okay. Uh, during each transition from 0 255 to 0, TOIF bit in INTCON register is set. Okay. 